Let's try the softball foot treatment. Remember, you'll always begin by looking down at your feet and lining them up side by side. We're gonna do a body scan assess and an autopilot assess. So remember, to do these assessments, you can't use the common sense of touch or vision. So allow your arms to rest at your side and close your eyes. Take a nice focused breath into your body. Give yourself permission to sense what you feel and notice the floor under your feet. Notice if it feels like you've got more weight under your right foot or your left foot. Without moving, notice if you're feeling any region of your foot on either side. Perhaps you're feeling your left heel or the ball of your right foot. Just notice if anything's calling itself out to you. Then scan up your legs. Notice if you're squeezing the muscles in your thighs or your butt cheeks, or if you're locking out your knees to remain standing. If you're feeling any of these things, this is a sign that your autopilot is functioning inefficiently. You're working awfully hard right now. Imagine how hard you work when you move. Draw your awareness back down to your feet. Even though you know you've set your feet up side by side, you might feel like one foot is stepping in front of the other. That's also autopilot inefficiency. Finally, let's challenge our autopilot to reacquire a signal from head to toe. I want you to take a focused breath and lift all 10 toes off the ground. Now your body's gonna have to rebalance holding yourself here. Just stay here for five to 10 seconds. What we're gonna do is challenge our autopilot to create frequency or vibration from head to toe. Take a nice focused breath, and on an exhale, drop all 10 toes to the ground. And notice if your body drifts forward. Open up your eyes. If you notice your body drift forward, that's a simple sign that your autopilot is having a hard time reacquiring its connection to your center of gravity. To point out how much you use vision to keep yourself stable, keep your eyes open and lift all 10 toes with me again. Take a nice focused breath here, and on an exhale, drop all 10 toes. If you notice that you don't drift at all, you're now recognizing how much vision keeps us balanced and stable. Only your vision is not gonna get better as you age. So let's heighten your body sense so you naturally have better balance. So I'm gonna have you start again under your right foot. You're gonna place the ball at position point number one and you're gonna create gentle compression by shifting your body weight left to right. Just give your body time to adapt to the compression you're creating. Remember, if you edge body weight over the ball and you feel pain, that's your cue to ease back pressure, not step harder. Once you find a spot that you can comfortably compress the ball, wait there and let's help your autopilot reacquire its connection to your center of gravity by moving your joints around your pelvis. So remember your joints are like satellites and your autopilot functions like a GPS system. So the more you move your joints around that pelvis of yours, the more you're helping your autopilot reacquire its connection to your center of gravity. Come on back up, take a focused breath. Now let's try position point pressing. Take your left foot and step backward. Bring the ball underneath position point number two and create gentle compression over the ball. Take a focused breath and then decompress. Find the knuckle that coincides with your second toe. Same thing, create straight down compression to mobilize the joint and then decompress. Try to find your third knuckle and same thing, create compression and then decompress. Try to find the knuckle that coincides with your fourth knuckle. And listen, your foot does not go straight across like Fred Flintstone's foot. It curves a little bit. So bring the ball back a little bit more. You shouldn't see the ball under your toes. And then decompress and go to your pinky knuckle. You have to bring the ball even further back. That knuckle is further back than you think as you create that gentle compression. Take a focused breath and then decompress. Now let's try to find position point 3A. That's that lower number three. If you want, cheat the ball so that you see it the first time, and then let the ball disappear and create gentle compression. Take a focused breath, and then decompress. Go to 3B, that upper number three, and create compression. Notice if this area is tender. This point relates right to your neck and can be a very tender spot for a lot of us. Decompress. Go to position point number four on the outside arch of your foot, halfway between your pinky toe and your heel, and create compression. And then decompress and see if you can find position point number five just in front of your heel and take a focused breath. Let's repeat position point pressing. Again, go to position point number one, create straight down compression, take a focused breath, and decompress. And then, at your own pace, go under each knuckle across the forefoot. 
Now this time as you go underneath the knuckles, I want you to look down at the top of your foot. When connective tissue has good hydration, the knuckles will rise up in the foot pad as you create the compression. So if you look down at your foot and you don't see knuckles lifting up, you now know you have a little bit of connective tissue dehydration living in your body. And this could be altering your balance and stability. Try to find position point number 3A and create that gentle compression. And then decompress, go to the upper number 3B and create compression and take a focus breath. Decompress, go to position point number four on the outside arch of your foot, halfway between your pinky toe and your heel and take a focus breath and then decompress and find position point number five. Once you create the compression on position point number five, decompress 50% of your body weight so you've got even balance between your left and right leg, and let's try gliding. Remember, gliding is that small local compression technique. We wanna keep the pressure consistent. It's not the depth of pressure, it's the consistency that creates that fluid exchange. Slowly work the ball all the way to the back of the heel. Gliding is that preparatory technique for the shear, and it's also a way to investigate tissue for the barriers or areas of restriction. And here we've got a lot of barriers in our feet. So when you come back to position point number five, tighten up the wiggle for the direct shear. Remember, this is a tight local compression technique to increase that fluid that's in this local region of the foot. Then once you do your shear force, compress and wait. Give the tissue a moment to adapt, Take a nice focused breath. And now let's try rinsing across the forefoot. Bring the ball underneath position point number two and create consistent pressure across to your pinky knuckle. And then release and go back to your big toe and come across. And then release. So just like when you turn on your cell phone, you only swipe the phone one direction. It's the same thing here. We wanna create fluid movement in one direction. Try that one more time from the big toe to the pinky toe. Then let's rinse down the foot from toe to heel. Remember, when you rinse down the foot, keep your knees soft and allow your entire body to go over the ball so that the other hip and foot don't become tired as you're doing this. Remember, you could always do this entire technique seated you don't need to be standing like I'm doing here. Let's try two more rinsing passes down the foot and one more. Take a focused breath and now let's try friction. Remember, this one requires balance. So try to balance on your left leg and very, very lightly start to rub the ball underneath the bottom of your right foot. Take a nice focused breath and let it go. Let's bring our feet side by side again. Line your feet up. Now, you might notice that your foot feels a little different, which I always appreciate because you were rubbing your foot with a ball, but let's use our body sense and reassess to see if we've gotten the fluids throughout the entire body. Bring your arms at your side and close your eyes. Take a focused breath. I want you to first draw some awareness to the leg we have not melted. So notice your left leg. When fluid is absent in the connective tissue, our joints become compressed. And you'll start to notice that you actually have joints. So in your left leg, if you're noticing you have a hip, a knee, and an ankle, but on the right leg, the leg we've melted, if it feels more seamless and rooted to the ground, we know we've created that fluid exchange clear up to the hip. Open up your eyes. Take a nice focused breath. Let's try this on the other side. I want you to place the ball underneath the center of your left foot. Bring the ball underneath the foot at position point number one and begin to shift your body weight left and right. Remember, you're trying to find tolerable compression. Don't cause pain. Try to identify that place where you could tolerably compress the ball and stand for a moment. Take a focused breath and start to move your joints around your pelvis so that you help your autopilot reacquire its connection to your center of gravity. This will help us with balance when we go to move. Come on back up top. Take another focused breath. Take your right leg and step backward. Now bring the ball to position point number two. Take a focused breath and let's create position point pressing across the forefoot. Remember, this forward and back stepping motion is a part of the technique. So I wanna make sure that you're constantly shifting your body weight forward and back. Every time you step backward, you're challenging your balance, which heightens the autopilot's reception to your center of gravity and can heighten your natural balance. Once you get to the pinky knuckle, make sure that you've brought that ball back a little deeper. 
and then decompress. Let's try to find position point 3A, the lower number three, halfway between the big toe and the heel. Take a focused breath. Then step backward. Go to the upper number three, right behind the knuckle, and create compression on 3B. Decompress. Try to find position point number four, halfway between your pinky toe and your heel. And again, ease some body weight onto the ball, and then release, and try to find position point number five, just in front of the heel. Let's go through position point pressing one more time, now that you're familiar with it. Center of the foot, take a focused breath, and decompress. Position point number two, remember, at the forefoot, every time we compress on a knuckle, if you look down at your foot, you wanna see those knuckles rising up in the foot pad. That's showing you good hydration and good mobilization of the joints. When connective tissue is dehydrated, our joints get stiff and they don't move. So we wanna make sure that these joints stay hydrated because this region of your foot is related to your shoulders, eyes, ears, head, neck, and jaw. Decompress, try to find 3A on the inner arch and create compression. This point relates to digestion, so take a focused breath and notice if it's tender. Decompress, go to the upper number 3B and create compression. This point relates to your neck. Take another focused breath. Decompress, try to find position point number four and create compression. This point relates to the lateral line of the body and also stimulates the metabolic system. Decompress and go to position point number five. This point relates right to the pelvis. Keep your pressure constant, take a focused breath, and then decompress to create even weight between your left and right foot. Keep your forefoot on the ground and let's go for our glide. Consistent pressure right at position point five is what a glide is all about. Keep your pressure constant. It's not about the depth of pressure. Once you create consistent pressure, start to move the ball all the way to the back of the heel. I always think this move looks like the dance move, the twist. So see how my whole hip is moving with my body? I'm creating that nice gentle motion. So I don't want my knee to create any compression or twisting. Work your way back to position point number five, and once you get back there, tighten up the wiggle. Remember, this is the shear technique. This is what increases the fluid exchange from cell to cell and creates that local exchange of fluid that we're gonna bring through the body with the rinse. Now wait here, create the compression, take a nice focused breath, decompress, and let's rinse from the big toe all the way across to the pinky toe. Lighten up, go back to the big toe, and rinse from big toe to pinky toe, and release. Let's go two more times to create that fluid exchange across the forefoot, and then let's take the fluid through the body from big toe to the heel, and then the second toe to the heel, and then the third toe to the heel. So remember, shift your body weight back and forth so that your other hip doesn't get tired and you keep your pressure consistent underneath the forefoot. Let's do two more rinsing passes. And then one more time. The last technique you'll remember is friction. A nice light motion. Remember with friction, I want you to go back and forth two times at the end of any treatment because friction helps to stimulate the lymphatic system and creates a blood flow and fluid exchange right to the skin, which can really offer up a lot of fluid decompression and exchange throughout the body. So if you feel at the end of the day, your feet feel like they swell up, friction is a great technique to do. Take a nice focused breath and let it go. Bring your feet side by side one more time. Line your feet up so that you're convinced they're side by side again. Bring your arms at your side and let's try the body scan and autopilot assess one more time. Close your eyes. Take a nice focused breath into your body. Notice your footprints. If now the footprints feel more cohesive, we've got better grounding for your body to stay balanced on. Scan up your legs. If before you were clenching your thighs or butt cheeks or you were naturally locking out your knees, you might now notice that your body is more relaxed in this upright position. Draw your awareness back down to your feet. If before you were feeling like one foot was staggered in front of the other, ideally now the feet are more rooted and grounded into the floor. Finally, let's assess our autopilot. Take a focused breath 
And on an exhale, lift all 10 toes off the ground again. Now you might notice this time your body shifts back very fast, but that is not a bad exchange. It's just your body reorganizing new vibration because movement is happening through the body faster. Take a focused breath and on an exhale, drop all 10 toes to the ground. <sighs> Open up your eyes. If you notice that you've drifted less or your body is more stable, you have helped your autopilot reacquire its connection to your center of gravity, and this can help you decompress unnecessary low back, hip, and knee pain. Make sure that you drink eight to 10 fluid ounces of water and have a great day.